The last thing I want to demonstrate with the bark filter is using it as a series of envelope followers. It produces a different voltage depending on the strength in each band inside its filter. And you can use this to do frequency dependent processing, such as modulating another filter or wavefolder or something based on the energy just in a certain frequency band. Or my favorite application is triggering other percussion sounds based on, say, a drum loop coming into it. So let's dive into that. First, I'm going to simplify this patch a little bit though. I don't need the synth anymore, so I'm actually going to pull a lot of these cables to do with the synth sound out of the patch just to reduce some of the patch clutter here. I've already pulled the audio outs from the bark filter, but I still have the percussion sounds going, and here's the loop. A nice Keith LeBlanc drum loop. I don't need the sound from the synth, so I'll pull that input from the bark filter so that the drum loop is coming into all bands of the bark filter right now. What I want to do is figure out what frequency bands each of those drum sounds is happening in. So I'm going to take the all filters output from the bark filter, run it into one of my inputs in my mixer, bring up its level, go ahead and make sure that I'm not boosting any band with voltage control, and start bringing up individual bands. For example, you'd expect the lowest one to be the kick drum, Well, a bit of the snare drum's mixing into that as well. But you see most of the energy is in the kick. Snare drum. Yep, it's triggering pretty good on two there. Let's go find some of these other hi-hats or cymbal sounds up here. That's a pretty good isolation on the hi-hat. Has a little bit of the attack of the snare or kick, but it's pretty good on the hi-hat there. Maybe that's even better. Yeah, it has too much of the kick slap in it there. You really hear the attack of the kick in these lower bands. Well, that's a really good one for the snare. But you can hear how you can isolate different instruments in these bands. Oh yeah, I do like that for the snare a lot. That's even better. Okay. Let's take advantage of that to go ahead and trigger some external drum sounds. I have a noise engineering of a iteratos and also a pico drum from Erica. So the first thing I'm going to do is try to use that kick drum in the lowest band to trigger the BI. I'm going to pull a red cable to indicate triggering my system. Now this top band is the audio out and the band of jacks below it is the voltage out. Think of it as like an AC for frequency modulation and more of a DC for other type of modulations. Let's go ahead and trigger that there. You can see the green light blinking on the BI, indicating it is getting triggered. Then let's bring the audio down from the BI into one of my inputs here. There's the original drum loop. And the BI adding some sound to it. Let's go ahead and pan these a little bit. Pitch down a little bit. Okay, so there's a reinforced kick using the BI. Now let's go for that hi hat sound and see if we can go ahead and trigger, say, the pico drum with that. Now, this is a pretty weak signal. Let me see if I take just the envelope out and go into one of the Pico's trigger inputs. I am getting enough CV there. I don't think I need to process the signal anymore. If I had to, I would have boosted it with something like the Levitate, which can multiply a signal by times two. It looks like we're getting good trigger up there. Let's see what sort of audio we're getting as a result. I pulled an unused audio output here. Bring up the Pico. Maybe pan it to the right. There we go. It does sound like we have a little trouble with multiple triggers here. Let me go ahead and isolate just that. 
yeah, that that's happening because currently I have no smoothing of the signal coming out of the envelope follower. There is a follower's decay knob on the bark filter, which allows me to slow the decay of any voltages coming out of it, but doesn't really cure attacks that are too noisy and too fast. So to do that, I'm going to use some sort of trigger processor. For example, I quite often use a gate delay, such as the one built into the Roland 572, not to delay the gate, but to add a fixed amount of time to it to hold it off from triggering too fast. So let's take that patch cord running to the Pico Drums trigger input, take its output from my gate delay, and feed into the gate delay that band's envelope follower. You can already hear how the Roland 572's gate time parameter is holding off re-triggers to get rid of some of those spurious ones. If I knock it down to its bare minimum setting, it's still capturing a good number of the triggers, so I think that's going to work. Good, that's an improvement. Or added kick, and the original drum loop. Might pitch that back up again. Now here I'm just using this to trigger external sounds. Of course you can also use these on slower moving sounds to go ahead and create signals to modulate other parameters such as cutoff, resonance, etc. Or again, you can go ahead and use the direct filter audio outputs as FM outputs. You might even want to put a delay line in between either the follower output or the filter outputs just to get real system-based music where an audio signal coming in after delay will then affect another parameter down the road, which then might feed back, back into the bark filter, and you can create really complex patches. Now the theme of this is supposed to be Eurorack expansion, where you start with a small Eurorack system and are looking at what modules to expand it with. I would not make the bark filter the first thing I added to something like um, an Atlantis or a Mother 32, because it's very advanced and it's not very small, and it's not very inexpensive. But it is very powerful and it gives you several different things you can do with it. It's good for a large system where you can take advantage of all of these voltage ins and voltage outs and audio outs to create system type patches where things are much more complex or much more subtle. So do keep in mind that you might want to eventually get down here down the road to create more complex patches out of your ever-growing modular synth.